Hi, welcome to How to Repair. Is your cooker not lighting up when you turn it onto the light? Or when you open the door, there's no light inside the oven? You may have a problem with the bulb or the bulb holder. So many people with these new bulb systems are not fitting them correctly, or they are misaligning the bulb on the holder. And let me explain. The actual bulb holder is located in the back of the oven, on the wall, or in the top of the oven. When trying to fit these bulbs, it is so easy for people to push the bulb in thinking that they've got a connection and they've misaligned the bulb. If I bring this up to the camera for you, the actual bulb itself has to line up correctly in the holder. And I'll be showing you in this video not only how to test the bulb, how to fit it correctly, but I will also show you problems that can occur with the bulb holders due to either corrosion or the actual terminals not making good contacts with the actual fitting. This cooker is manufactured by Beko, and they actually make for all these brands you can see on the screen here. But this video will apply to freestanding cookers, built-in cookers from all manufacturers that are using the G9 system. To replace your bulb or test the bulb, you will be able to do it in situ, whether you have a single oven or a double oven. But you will need to remove the door to be able to see inside the oven correctly. This is quite straightforward on most makes. You just have a couple of clips that you push down to take the door off. You will need to make sure also that the power is disconnected from the cooker. Take the door up to its natural position and the door will slide away. Then we need to remove everything from within inside the oven. To remove the lens cover is straightforward. Unscrew it. It's worth noting to wear a glove or have a piece of cloth in case this is sticky and can break in your hand. To remove the bulb, do take note of the way the fitting comes out because this will assist you in replacing it. As you can see, this is going from front to back. To test the bulb, we normally use a multimeter, but if I bring this up to the lens for you, if you closely look inside the bulb, you can see the filament. If the filament is broken, then the bulb will need replacing. But to test with a multimeter is straightforward and easy. Turn your meter onto continuity, connect each side. and you can see that the bulb has continuity. Therefore, it does not need replacing. If you have no continuity, you need to replace the bulb. When fitting a new bulb, make sure you do not handle it with your fingers. Always use a piece of tissue and then push it into location, making sure it clips in nicely and give the bulb a quick wipe. The reason you don't handle the bulb is it will leave an oily residue from your fingers which can cause hot spots and this is why they blow. You can now plug the cooker back into the electricity to test if the bulb works. If it works then all you have to do is put the lens cover on. If it does not then we need to remove the cooker to actually then have a look at the light fitting. If you have a single oven or double oven, this is the point where you'll be able to watch this video to learn how to take the appliance out. If you already know how to do this, or you have a freestanding cooker, you can jump to the next point in the video because it is time stamped for you. If you have a freestanding appliance, it's easy to work on. But when you have a double oven like this one or a single oven like this one, we're going to need to take it out the housing first to actually work on the appliance. Okay, the first thing that needs to be done, you need to isolate the electricity at the fuse board because the plug for this appliance may be behind it or in an adjacent cupboard. You may have it hardwired as well and this needs to be dealt with before we lift the cooker out of situ. When accessing the fuse board, you may have a single oven or a double oven. This is a 16 amp supply, this is a 32 amp supply or you have the main switch. Turning these off, but if in doubt, you can always turn the main power to the property. Now that you've disconnected the electricity, it is safe for you to actually start removing the oven. Now what we need to do here now is remove the actual door, not only for the purpose of lightening the load on the appliance, but also to make sure that no damage occurs to the glass when we actually take the oven out of situ. To remove the oven door is quite simple. Just open it up 
On the early models of Beko Machine, there will be some catches on either side that you need to bend over to actually take the whole hinge out of the frame. But on the more modern cookers, there are a couple of catches that we need to press down. And just pressing these catches down on each side, and I'll put an exploded view of this in the side here, you will then be able to actually release the two pins on the door. Take the door up to its natural position, and then you will be able to slide it away. Now we're able to remove the interior of the oven. Now we're ready to take the cooker out, but on double ovens you will need a table and I suggest putting a towel on top of it and you may need two people to actually lift the cooker to get it out. With a single oven I just use a small crate. Putting this down we are then able to remove the two screws that hold the actual cooker to the chassis of the cabinet. On double ovens there may be up to six screws. Now that you've removed all the screws we're ready to lift the cooker out. Putting your hand inside the oven, carefully lift the oven over and slide it out, dropping it down onto the case. Now if you are using a larger oven, you will need to actually have some help doing this. We're now able to turn this around to the side, making sure that you're not pulling the cable too hard. Then we'll be ready to disconnect the appliance from the electricity. If your oven is plugged in, you'll now be able to remove the plug. But if it is hardwired in, we have to undo the electrical connection. You may even have an isolation socket behind the cooker. To remove, just put a small screwdriver in. And there's two clips on this that you need to put your screwdriver in just to lift up. But to double check everything, do go across the live and the neutral connection to check that there is no electricity present. As there is no electricity present, it's safe to undo. Undoing the retaining clip, move that away. Now we can undo the live, the neutral, and the earth. The cable can now be pulled out and put safe. Okay, now you've got the cooker out of situ and you've learned how to take the door off because it does make it much easier for working on the appliance. We need to actually remove this top panel, which is two screws on either side. And then at the rear of the appliance, we've got three screws on the top and multiple down the side. It will vary from model to model. The top panel will come away, but be careful of the edges. They are sharp. On some of the Beko cookers, the panel will hinge away, giving you access to the appliance. Okay, here we have the light holder, and the way that you would actually test it, you would actually use either the connections from here doing a multimeter test with pins going into the correct location on the underside, but that's very hard to do because they are very small orifices that you need to get the pin into. The other way to do it is do a live test. Now I'm going to connect the cooker back up to the electricity supply and I'll just put the cover shut. Turning the cooker on, remember to turn the timer to its manual setting and turn the light in the on position. Then using your multimeter, you will be able to ascertain whether you have the correct voltage going through to the light fitting here. And I'll just place my meter carefully there and going across the two terminals, if I can get my hands out of the way, you can actually see that we have 240 volts present. This means that the light fitting itself is at fault and will need to be replaced. If you need to remove the holder and replace it, pull off the two wires on either side and the earth. Leaning your hand inside the appliance, peeling back the insulation slightly, you will see three lugs on the actual holder. Press these lugs in while dropping the bulb holder down. Once you've got it down, 
make sure you hold the light fitting while dropping it down so you can inspect it. When testing a bulb, you need to go across the two terminals. Just put your con meter on continuity and you can test across. And as you can see, the bulb is good. Then reinsert the bulb into the holder. I'm using a piece of tissue to make sure I do not leave any fingerprints on the actual bulb, as this will cause a hot spot and can cause them to blow. Insert the bulb into the holder, then put the cover back on, ready to actually fit it to the appliance. But it is well worth double checking your work. Going across the two terminal connections, we are able to retest again, showing that the bulb is actually working when we connect it up to the electricity supply. When fitting the holder back into the actual oven, you'll notice that there's a large lump on the side. This locates in this location. You can see on this circle, if I move the insulation back a bit, you can actually see an indentation here. The actual bulb holder needs to go in correctly. Leaning in, sliding it in, it clips into place. Now you are able to reconnect the wiring. And there we go. I hope this video helped you fix your cooker or oven. Remember, if you have any further questions, I will need your brand, your model number, and a detailed description of the fault. Or you could upload a video to YouTube and send us the link. You can either use the comments below or the contact us page at the website, and the link is in the description below. And if you do need any parts for your cooker or oven, remember some parts are serial number dependent. So make sure you have all the relevant information before ordering the parts. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. If we really helped you, you can always click on the Bipolar Beer page to support the website, as that's what keeps us going and able to make these videos for you. Thank you very much indeed for watching.